mortuary staff and uh, what, what a great service to this community for 49 years isn't it amazing and, and I know some of these folks have been awake all night long and uh, so we are grateful for them and uh, some of them got up early early this morning to, to polish up and wipe off chairs and so thanks to Tammy and all of her staff yeah they're, they're really the heroes and, and uh, Ventura County Star did a great article yesterday talking about all the prep for this, the, the least of which is the folks in skirts up here. <laughs> it's the hard workers of this mortuary that make this possible. Personal choices, wear a longer skirt. <laughs> oh, it's only begun to pick on him. So. All right, let's see how well you know the script, uh, this ancient script. Christ is risen. He is yes. risen indeed. Some Lutherans added hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, well, now what? Really? I mean, you're in the middle of it. In just a few moments, the service will be over. Maybe for some of you, Easter will be over entirely. This is your entire celebration of it. For others, there will be ham and deviled eggs and the Easter Bunny, and I've always found it odd that we celebrate the resurrection of a Jewish and kosher teacher with ham. <laughs> What's the deal with deviled eggs? <laughs> Can't they be empty tomb eggs on Easter? Why does the devil have to sneak in on this? And the Easter Bunny. Bunnies don't lay eggs. <laughs> Sorry if I've ruined someone's Easter. <laughs> so you're... you're, you're <laughs> of course, it was Gary. No, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll unpack that later, Gary. So you're celebrating Easter, and a portion of your celebration is over, and so now what? I mean, really. Now what? You could keep thinking about this day, wasn't it a lovely morning? Oh yes, says your wife. What a nice Easter Sunday service. Uh, the mortuary and the cemetery provides such a wonderful opportunity. Oh honey, I just love those sheep, pipes up the husband. <laughs> They're the main attraction. We should have tweeted that. And they both exclaim together, but those bagpipes. <laughs> They could wake the dead, the husband said. <gasps> Says the wife, is that sacrilegious? No, the husband finally says, Easter's basically about waking the dead anyway. But, but now what? Now that you've celebrated Easter, by the end of this day, now what? Some of you will return to work tomorrow. Some will go back to school. Stores will put the Easter candy on sale and the decorations will be put away. They'll move on. But the Lord of Easter begs you to reflect upon the question, since I have been raised from the dead, now what? We all reach a place in our life where we'll ask that question. This group of clergy are all in a somewhat of a now what kind of question in our lives. One nears retirement, one's just past it, another's a young parent, one's building a career, another has a new job, and as for me, our youngest son is a senior at Westlake High School, go Warriors, and my wife and I will enter the ranks of folks called empty nesters. Now what? Likely we ask that question 
at the end of some phase of a life journey, when the path has come to a close, that's a natural place for that question. Maybe we're fortunate to ask it at the end of some success. Now what? And we can shout with superstar athletes and well-paid endorsers, I'm going to Disneyland. Disneyland, thanks for the cultural reference. <laughs> but we often find this question in a much more difficult place, at the end of a career perhaps, or in retirement, or at the end of a marriage, or a significant relationship, or the end of a life. Now what? Easter has its own now what question. What does it mean to sit here in the cold before the field of the dead and proclaim that one man, Jesus of Nazareth, beat it, overturned death's hold, broke it, and rose from death to life? It's a radical message. It's a revolution. But by the way that most of us live out this radical news, this amazing thing turns into something a little bit more akin to this, that Jesus popped out of the tomb to tell us whether there's six more weeks of winter or not. <laughs> He's not a Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog. Thanks, Jesus. We'll see you next year at the mortuary for an Easter celebration. Insightful, but often, often a mistaken forecast. No, I make light to make a very serious point about us, even among the most devout. We act like this day is only a day to celebrate a historical event, but we return to the usual way of life long before CVS sells out of Peeps or Reese's <laughs> eggs. But Jesus didn't rise to go back down. He rose to change death and change life, to bring us to something new and something wonderful. Easter isn't a day to celebrate, it's a revolution of life. The problem isn't the reality of Easter or the struggle with an understanding of what does it mean that someone rises from the dead. The problem that the world often has is our practice as Christians that the joy of this day ends with this day. And so what most people find hard to swallow is the answer to the question, now what, that many Christians live, which is, well, not much. And the world pulls us back toward the darkness and violence of Good Friday, a world that's caught in a cycle of violence and retribution. And Easter wants to speak something new into that, to break that cycle. But if this is true, this news that we proclaim that Christ is risen. We don't need to hold on to our lives with such fear. We don't have to look at the future with such gloom. We don't have to be slaves again to our anxiety or our worry or our hatred or our resentments, but can move forward in God's love and power and mercy and hope. We don't have to live somber lives we can live our life in true joy because of its hope. For someone who has lost the love of their life and may be lying out here in this field or a child, Easter is to change everything. Everything. The hope offered by God in the proclamation of this day of Jesus risen from the dead is profound and real and has been a source of great individual empowerment and societal change for two millennia. H.G. Wells talked about his impact. He marveled this after two millennia. He says, quote, as a historian like myself, who doesn't even call himself a Christian, finds the picture centering irresistibly around the life and character of this most significant man. The historian's test of an individual's greatness is what does he leave to grow? Did he start people thinking, writes H.G. Wells, along fresh lines with a vigor that persisted after him? By this test, he wrote, Jesus stands first. Why do we continue to live like Good Friday people? 
in the Easter reality of the revolution of the Christian message. What does it look like? Now what? Mother Teresa, we all know something about her, overheard a visitor to one of her hospitals that cares for lepers where her sisters were cleaning open wounds and human excrement and the twisted and deformed bodies of those who suffer with leprosy. A woman visitor said under her breath, thinking she was not speaking really to anyone, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. Mother Teresa overheard her, turned her and said, neither would I. <laughs> wow. Meaning she would never do that for a million dollars, but she would do it for her savior. She will do it for the master who says no to death and sorrow and yes to life. And Teresa answered the now what of the Easter message with a life of service. The secular journalist named Malcolm Muggeridge was brought up short while visiting one of the hospitals for the lepers in India run by the missionaries of charity. And as, she saw, as he saw Mother Teresa in action, he realized with the force of sudden insight that humanists, which he considered himself, do not run leper hospitals in the most impoverished areas of the world where no profit can be made or even a break even possible. But someone who follows, one who rises from the dead answers the question, now what? Not with profit margins and flow charts, but with lives that are reacquainted with dignity. And by it, life begins to steal out little Easter victories from the gaping jaws of death. That's the now what. Malcolm Muggeridge became a Christian in that profound insight. I tell you about Mother Teresa because we all know something about her, but there are countless people all around us and throughout the world who get no notoriety but live the Easter now what. There's a woman in Santa Paula. She's a successful realtor. But do you know what she lives for? It's not for real estate. It's not for making money, no. It's Richard's house, and I'm not talking about a real estate property. I'm talking about a shelter for the homeless. You know why she does it? Kay is an Easter person. She knows that Jesus makes a difference, and she's going to enact the now what by stealing a little Easter victory in a Good Friday world for the sake of her Savior who calls her forward into a life of service and of joy for other people. Now what? Easter people are signs of God's yes in a world that negates. We are a sign of hope in a world that is fascinated by its darkness. We know this to be true. We live in a world stuck in Good Friday, in Brussels or Paris or Beirut or you name it, places in the world. A world that lives by a rule Eye for an eye. How's that worked out for us? We need a world where people live beyond this to be Easter people who offer an alternative to the cycle of violence and retribution to live for Easter hope and to steal out of a dark world small Easter victories, living in such hope with forgiveness, mercy, justice seeking, and peace. Maybe we could work on this a little bit, just the, the yes of God to life. Maybe we could work on, on this a little bit to enact this beyond the sale price of the peeps to maybe even make it to, well, April 2nd with the joy of Easter. You, you think you can enjoy, join me in just a little bit more of the yes? I mean, my yes today, it's so simple. You know, we're up early. We, we've been involved in several services throughout the week. So my yes today, my big yes. Okay, so see, keep it simple, folks, is not to fall asleep on my waiting wife today. <laughs> keep it simple. What is the yes to life that God once worked into this Good Friday world? What hope can you instill? It may be small things or it may be 
like a realtor in Santa Paula or a sister in India. Who knows what God will call you to do? But we are all called, not just to now what, but Lord, what's next? Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.